This is 5 app ideas with AI that you can start in 2023. And the best part is that you can potentially make from $100 per month to $1,000 per month. My name is Haris. And my name is Derek from Sigma School. And we are going to share with you today our top 5 ideas that we believe can work and we have experience with. Just a disclaimer, we don't necessarily guarantee success and factors like execution matters a lot. Therefore, let's get started with the first idea. So the first million dollar idea, I think, is a meeting AI summarizer for businesses. So what do we mean or what do I mean by AI summarizer? So basically, for a meeting, it takes around an hour, two hours, sometimes 30 right. minutes, right? And usually, people want to know what are the actionable steps or things that we need to do. Right. So I believe that in Sigma School, we had that problem. And yeah. I've been lurking around and finding a lot of these like AI meeting assistants and all of them. And they're all shit <laughs> because none of them are giving me the things that I want to summarize. That's a good idea because a pain point that I have and for most people running businesses or just doing anything in a productive company, they end up being in a lot of meetings. And the problem is that you tend to forget things that you say. Just imagine spending like one hour in a meeting and ending up forgetting 70% of what you guys discussed about. So I think what's really helpful is if the, the AI is able to help us summarize what we've said into a few key action pointers. Okay, here's what's next. Here's what's discussed. Like very easy to read rather than us just reading like dumb raw transcriptions. That's yeah. something that definitely we will pay good money for if it works. Derek, uh, since we are in Sigma school, how much uh, do you think this service will cost? How much you will pay? So if uh, I were I to say... $20 yeah. per month, would you Definitely. pay more? Definitely. I yeah. think not a problem at all. If, if you think about it, Sigma School is still not super big. We're like a 15-man team. I think $20 per month is reasonable because the alternative is hiring someone else to sit there and listen in. I actually researched a lot of these AI meeting assistants. A lot of times, I think they are doing something good and it's just that the end result of the summarization is not something that I want. Definitely, I would, I would pay for a tool like this. Mm. The component of first capture our audio, our transcription, because yep. we have accents and everything. I don't know if you heard that Google is also creating their own model. And from my personal experience, Google's voice recognition is one of the best out there versus Siri right. and Alexa. And if you're able to connect the voice recognition from Google right. and right. connect it with like GPT-4. Honestly, it's... this is a good idea. I think for anyone who's out there hunting for ideas and indie hackers or whatever, yeah. feel free, just give me some credit when you, exactly. when you, when you do it. Man. We have yeah. so many ideas. Oh, we, we work, you work with us. Help you. Let us help exactly, you. Exactly, <laughs> we can help you. Because yes. like literally there's no good AI summarizer out there. But yes, so $20 a month for one business and $20 mm. per month, I don't mm. think it's a lot of money if yeah. a business is actually is sustainable and doing well. Yeah. So you can find five other more businesses that's already $100 per month. I think any businesses that is a good target audience for you would be definitely remote companies that uh, are doing yeah, online yes. meetings like 24-7. Yep. This would be really good. And if it's able to automatically generate everything, you know, from joining your call to transcribing to yep. summarizing and sending it to you, exactly. that'll be amazing. Everything's documented. You just don't right. need to worry about it. That's one exactly, person's job yeah. automated away. And I so, think it's very doable, very minimal coding required. So yeah, what's Derek, the next idea? Uh, so amazing. the second idea is a math question generator using AI for tuition center owners. A little story is that I quit my job and I was wondering what's like my first startup idea to build. Really, there was one idea which is literally a math question generator. But back then, AI was hard to use. There was no like GPT-4 or chat GPT. So I really had to like hard code. And the thing is that I was surprised that I was able to get a client or tuition center owner to actually pay me money. And what's the best part? I didn't have a working product. <laughs> I just wow. pitched the idea. And then the tuition center owner who now is my friend, I told him, okay, in order for you to be in this, you have to pay $600. And my reason was like, I wanted to charge you $100, but since you are early adopter, you are like the first few people, 50% right. off, so $50 right. per month. But I'm only accepting one year subscription right. uh, payment, so $600. Do you think that this can apply to domains outside of math? Because the oh, questions yes. generator AI. So I believe like with GPT-4 or mm -hmm. the current AI, right. if you're a developer, it's very easy. You right, can just right. key in your prompts. The best and the most fun part is now it's easier than ever because you can connect this with 
literally no code tools, right? Things like Bubble or Softer or whatever. Build your own front end and just plug it into GPT-4. This is the best time. And if you don't know how to do it, ask GPT to teach you how to do it. Or you yeah. can come to us at sigmaschool.co, yes, teach definitely. you on how to build this. Because I would say I've done my research on this like tuition center in Singapore. A lot of these tuition center owners are actually building this kind of thing. It's sure. not something new. It is a common thing, but it's a, like a side project because they don't see the value to it because mm. they have their own way of thinking, creating questions, making it. it interesting. Well, I think it goes down to the factor where you are replacing one hire, right? Yes. Before this, you need to hire someone to manually create questions, manually exactly. create lessons. And with questions and that, there's going to be multiple solutions to a single question. And it's literally a full-time job, right? And if you're able to do this and you do it well, people will pay you good money for it. And honestly, a tuition center that has like 200 students will pay way more than $20 for this. Yeah. Yeah. So just one thing to take note is that most tuition centers in Singapore is still using pen and paper. We haven't right. like fully Amazing. transitioned to that. I'm actually very surprised why in you know, Singapore, such a developed, driven, forward-thinking country is still very pen and paper. Like, when I went yeah. there and I spoke to a few businesses, that's what they told me as well. They're like, huh, what tools are you using? I was telling him all the tools I was taught. He was yeah. like, huh? Uh, we use pen and paper only. Like, right? <laughs> and even in Malaysia right now, and for those of you who are looking at, when you're watching this video, there's a lot of things that doesn't require AI, right? Like just from bringing a company from pen and paper to digitizing it, digital transformation yeah. itself is a role on its own with or without AI. And I think definitely something that you can look into. Let's continue with the next idea. So the third idea that I think will make you a lot of money is this thing called a marketplace for AI prompt. Right? I'm not so, convinced. Tell me more. <laughs> right now, a lot of people are using AI prompts to do a lot of things, right? Create YouTube script. Literally, this YouTube script yeah. was created by yeah, ChatGPT. Yeah. And people are using it for copy. People are using it for captions or right. TikTok ideas. And a lot of people are using prompts that are well created. And now a lot of people are seeing the value of using AI prompts whether you're a digital marketing agency, whether do research as well. These are things that will take some time for you to actually trial and mm -hmm. error. There is one service that's called AI RPM, and it's similar to that. It's just that you have to pay a service because they already have a very good list of AI prompts to use. Why not just make it a marketplace where anyone can just put whatever prompts they have, but they don't share it until you right. pay it. And the prompts right. can be as cheap as a dollar. Right. Well, honestly, this idea, I'm not very convinced because like, why would you want to buy a prompt and how do you sell your prompt before yes. you seeing it being used? I, like uh, yep. maybe the execution or the operational side of things, I don't see it, but I do understand with all startup ideas, it all starts with a pain point. And there is a pain point because right now, I think I can give you a very good example. A lot of people are saying things like, oh, ChatGPT or GPT is going to automate a lot of jobs. That is true to a certain extent because I've tried running marketing campaigns from start to end using AI. And I can tell you it sucks. Oh, However, yeah. it requires a good prompt for example, mm. I, I can say, I am a coding school. Please create a Facebook ad campaign for me. I can do this. Something very generic and keep it open. And they'll give you something very simple. Yeah. Get their job done, lah, right? That's it. Yeah. Do the bare minimum. Go back to when Notion was something new and nobody really thinks of selling templates. Mm. And then when somebody saw a template, people are like, oh, I don't have to spend time to research on how to do things. And right. then there is a huge marketplace or now economy out of Notion templates. Like I think Figma templates. Yeah. Then I bought a Notion template for oh. tracking OKRs and it was like five bucks. I saved two hours just to go through the tutorial. I just copy and paste. Yeah. So I would say like maybe because I've tried the, the AI RPM, mm. uh, basically they will probably have a limit for how many prompts you can use for the thing because you're right. going to use the AI prompts quite often. Okay. So once you hit a limit, then say pay up. Then you have your free trial over already. You'll be like, okay, for twenty dollars a month, can no problem. So basically, you are just saving time to use whatever prompts that somebody has already written for you, and you can right. also modify it to get a very good prompt. It takes hours. If you're able to sell how well and how powerful your prompts are, then it's no brainer. I actually know people who are selling prompts for a dollar or something like that. Exactly. I, I, I yeah. know people who are selling like Notion templates and making a lot, lot of money a is lot. crazy. I think one idea that I want to talk about is uh, I see a freaking big market for even still in the non-AI world. A lot of the more traditional companies, the more companies with not so much of digital savviness, don't know so much about tech, they literally <laughs> don't know what's going on and they're dumping in 50 to 100k or even more to set yeah. up an entire yeah. team to build it. And you know what's the best part? This is a first-hand conversation I had with a friend of mine. 
right, where he was employed to another old school company. It's a pretty good company. It's a good culture and everything. But the problem is they invested in him and he is a smart guy. He proposed all the ideas from A to Z, did the designs, did the product documentation, every single thing. Guess what? He wants the developers. They said, how about use our in-house developers? And when he spoke to the in-house developers, none of them can cope with our current stack. In-house developers are like, I don't think I can achieve this left with WordPress because the companies okay. don't know what a developer is and they end up saying, oh, oh you can build this up. They, they don't know what is UGS or React, what's a full stack app. And I'm going to tell you now, if you are a coder or if you're just very digitally savvy, you're able to close these deals with or without AI and then the market is huge. Please allow me to introduce my next point, which is micro sourcing on this kind of things. Can you yep. explain what SaaS is? SaaS is a software as a service, which is just think about a service. If you ask me to clean your toilet for you, that's a service that I'm doing for you, but that is in the real world. So a software as a service is, imagine if I can use a software to do that. So that's a SaaS. It's usually hosted in the cloud and doesn't involve a human being's time, right? So think about software like Spotify, Netflix, Typeform. Mm -hmm. These are all cloud tools that you pay $10, $20 per month and they don't spend any extra time to service you. It's a product that you're using hosted on the cloud. You don't own it, it's on the cloud. Zoom right now, what we're recording on, it's a SaaS service. Yes. SaaS and a micro SaaS, what's the difference? And I get this question asked to me all the time. And I can answer this by saying that a micro SaaS is something that you target very specific in a specific niche or a specific domain. Think about it. Spotify is a music player app. The whole world is using Spotify. For you to compete with Spotify, it's going to be very difficult because it's a big market and with big markets, there's a lot of big competitors, there's big funders. They're worth hundreds of billions today. How are you, a one-man show, going to compete with Spotify's entire team, right? Because it's not just a tech company. They have like producers, labels, legal stuff, accountants, whatever. There are so many things and it's going to be difficult. So the idea behind Microsoft is focusing on a small little niche Whatever niche that Spotify isn't covering, I don't know specifically, but just an example that I can think and top my head, let's say in a very specific Indian language, because right. in India, there's a lot of languages yeah. in a very specific True. Indian language that they have music for that is not on Spotify in case if there's any. All so right. that is a market. It's a small market and it's so small that no one gave a damn enough to create a new tool for it. It's yeah. so small that Spotify neglected it. That is what I call a micro SaaS. And we're not aiming to become mega billionaires, but we are talking about now hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, five digits per month on recurring revenue through yeah. micro SaaS. The idea behind micro SaaS is you can either do this, whatever I just talked about, look for industries and find out different tools within a niche that is not solved. For example, Calendly is a booking tool. Anyone who wants to schedule a booking can use something like Calendly. If you think a bit further, Calendly is very broad. What if some companies like a car trading company, a dealership company, they want to schedule where they need two parties to meet up at the same time? Can they also have a specific Calendly but for car dealerships? Yeah. A very specific domain niche where you can, you can look for ideas like this. Or number two, what you can do is this. Find people who will pay you money to build it for them. For example, like what I told you just now, which is the traditional companies paying you a fee to build certain software for them, digital transformation, whatever. Build it once for them and then think. Who else is going to require something like this? I'm sure there are competitors. I'm sure, you know, if one guy is going to pay you 100K for this, someone else will definitely pay you something for it. Maybe not 100K, but will they pay $10 per month for exactly the same thing? So yep. it's a matter of getting someone to fund the first version of the project and then white labeling, of course, with permission. Okay, with permission. If you don't have permission and you do it, the first company can sue you, so you don't want to do that, right? So yeah. of course, with permission for whatever deal that you have, maybe give them a discount or whatever and build a white label service for this and productize a very specific domain in your tool for a specific domain. I think that's pretty cool. So you know, just finding a very small sector in the industry that maybe you deem that is not biggest or unserved market and then just create a software as a service, a very small software as a service kind of mm -hmm. application for them. Derek, what is the two ideas that you think you can right. do on micro SaaS that you think will definitely will? I think in the legal industry, is still mm. very much pen and paper right, because in right, legal, right. I think in legal companies, I from my conversations with lawyers and all that, I understand that there is no need to innovate yet because they make their money not from the software. They make their money by winning yes. big deals with Cases, bigger companies. Yes. They make a lot of money from that. And to them, it's like, whatever, I'll just pay for this. Like, what if I told the company that they're able to now for the smaller contracts, sometimes I, I should go to lawyers and pay them for contracting services yeah. just to get their advice. Contracting yeah. service for employee stock options, for yeah. shareholder agreements, for whatever. Like right. you go up to them and you ask them for it and they usually quote you a very high price. Yes. I don't know, six, seven, eight thousand for something that is essentially a damn template. <laughs> Why would you need to do this? If there was one yeah. guy who's able to say, I'm going to, 
create a tool for you to put in your variables and I plug in these variables automatically, not AI, exactly. just yeah. my custom code, our custom software developer code, coding all these variables into that agreement and giving you the agreement for something like what? A hundred bucks per agreement? A thousand and, times cheaper. Exactly. Like, and I've already yeah. used this service called Zigo. So Zigo is something that what you are pitching, but I think they are mainly focused in Singapore. I don't right. know whether Malaysia has it. And cool. we can insert AI into it. Because, Amazing. Yeah, like you can use AI to just vet to see whether there's some loopholes or not in that contract. You have your templates, right. you put your Correct. variables, and your AI mm. is your personal yes. lawyer. I think, Harris, two points. The first yeah. point is, just to address the point where you said that someone else is doing it. The fundamental premise of a SaaS is that someone else is already exactly. doing it. Yes. I mean, just to let everyone else know, that is the number one fundamental premise. If no one else is doing it, it's yeah. higher risk. The idea of a right. SaaS, yeah. micro SaaS, is that someone is doing it already, but they're just not solving a very specific need. And exactly. you need to be very clear that micro SaaS is not going to make you a billionaire or a trillionaire. It's there yeah. to, you know, it's a good thing that doesn't require VC funding you're solving a problem. And second point that I want to make, well, we're talking the about. AI legal, yeah, yes. the AI legal thing, right? That's very good because sometimes some people, co-founders or whatever, or business partners, are very sneaky. Yeah. I'm not like that. For me, I'm the kind of guy where I make things very clear with my partners or anyone who signs any form of contracts with me. I make it very freaking clear what's there. For me, I want both parties to be very happy. I don't want like, three years down the line and then say, ah, you didn't read this, uh, so I caught you. I don't want that kind of thing. I yeah. want it to be let's grow together and let's transparent, be very transparent. Right? Yes, win-win. However, a lot of people are not like that. A lot of people are like, okay, let's let our lawyers talk. And when lawyers talk, honestly, I don't know if you've seen a proper legal agreement between a shareholder before. It's like freaking 50 pages long. And you don't want to read it on because you don't understand what's going on. Honestly, exactly. like, yeah. they combine so many lines into one paragraph. I'm like, dude, this is copywriting complete <laughs> failure. If you can get an AI to look at the, the yep. contract yes. and yes. tells you what is non-standard, right? Ah. So based on its logic of what is a okay. standard shareholder agreement, a standard shareholder agreement will be like, okay, what's your equity? What's your vested period? What are you allowed to do? What you're not allowed to do? Okay. We have the standard stuff, right? There's a Malaysian law, whatever. Standard stuff. And then the AI will help you pinpoint, okay, on page number 37, point number 7.9.8, there is this clause that says that if we both go into business, you and your entire family and all your friends are not able to go into this education business exactly. ever again. Yeah. That is a very specific thing attacking just you, not me. And that yeah. is something that, you know, the AI will be able to understand. And you don't need to pay someone 7,000 to that. do that. Yes, exactly. That's and it actually already has been demoed mm. by the open AI team. They say, why not you do taxes? But taxes is a headache, whether it's for personal taxes or for your own business. And when you want to read through the whole, like the tax code, it's like a lot of reading and there's always age cases. The AI was able to answer the question Damn. of the age cases that people were actually, and even some lawyers will actually overlook using like this idea. So idea number four, which is basically a templating agreement or contract with an AI vetting to see whether that contract right. has any loopholes or something that is non-standard. I think that's an amazing idea. Amazing. Right? Yes. Amazing. Okay, let's move on to the last and final and the most amazing idea that Derek right. has. I wouldn't say it's the most amazing <laughs> idea, but it's it falls within the same ballpark of my boring ideas because yes. I'm a boring, boring guy. I think, I think you're a boring guy as well. Yeah. Yeah. Boring ideas are just you doing what works and just rinse and repeat and what works. And right exactly. now, I can tell you this, right? And that's a lot of we are on the rise of what I call a creator economy, mm. right? There are more and more people coming out to run their own small businesses, one-man team, freelancers, gym owners, lawyers, accountants, gym owners, architects, web designers, web developers, people who are out here to freelance. And these people will also want to have some form of a management tool for themselves. For example, they will want a CRM to manage who are their customers. They want to have a payment billing tool to build their customers. They want to have a scheduling app as well, right? To be able to talk to their customers. So I think having something like this and just selling it specifically for different domains. So it's like rinse and repeat kind of thing. You build a base platform, billing, CRM, and whatever you deem is based. I haven't really looked into this. If you're able to do that, then now you're able to solve the pain points of many different people within the same industry. For exactly. designers, for developers, freelancers, they always face the same issue. Texas, from deal sourcing, from yes. emailing clients, from right. invoicing, from taxes. It's always the same, like, how do you run the ads? Mm. Can you build something once and sell it to different people? Or if you want to go deep into just the gym owners, mm. what are they struggling yeah. with, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I that's think that's, that's right. I think that's an amazing idea because just solving, because every business always has a common problem to each 
to its own industry. Yep. Gym businesses always have similar problems. Uh, coding, right. tech education always has similar problems attacking just one small industry. A lot of people are gym owners, designers. So there are certain things that they need. Don't worry about going broad because yes. I think one thing that a lot of new entrepreneurs are always say because I'm actually a mentor at one of the accelerators in Malaysia and I do mentor quite a few mentees and one of the most common things is that people tend to think that their ideas are too small. That like, I want to cover a bigger segment and in my viewpoint is that you need to choose your path what's the path you want to go the broader you go the more competitors there are yeah. you think about it the broader you go you're going out to fight against the bigger boys facebook by the way facebook is just a networking tool but even with facebook around you can still have linkedin yes you know yeah. linkedin yeah. still exists even with facebook so yeah. if imagine if linkedin had the same mindset oh i want to go broader i want to have everyone then it's no mm. longer linkedin so it's just a matter of niching down and identifying your niche. I've met people building scheduling tools, which I think is great. I think people would pay for it. Things like, for example, for hairstylists, people booking an app to go for a hairstylist. And I'll tell you this, one haircut is probably around 30 ringgit, but one time dyeing your hair or whatever is like a few hundred or even thousands of ringgit. Exactly. So what happens when the customer bails? When the customer bails, you as the hairstylist, you have blocked out 30 minutes or one hour or a few hours for these customers. And exactly. if the customer bails, you just lost three hours of revenue. Why the hell are we going to do that? So mm. if the app is able to take a deposit up front first to make sure that the customers will show up, then that solves the problem for the hairstylist. And some people will say, I want to go, how about doing for dentists, la, for clinics la, and everything? Because they all mm. apply for this, on the same concept. Yes, you can do it, right? But why not win in one category first? Exactly. And then slowly grow from that. Because if exactly. you win in one category, you have success stories, la, you have cash flow, you just slowly exactly. grow from that. Yeah, I love that because sometimes it's very tempting to just go for different industries mm -hmm. are already very good at hairstyling, scheduling, and then you want to go for maybe something else, dentist. Then yeah. if you do too early, then different problems. Dentists has different problems. They probably have other things to care about while hairstylists have other things to care about as well. So it's always best to be known in one rather than first. win in one, win first. In yes. one first, correct. It's easier, it makes you, because it's building something is already very tough. The more features you add in, the yeah. more time and money you need. You're not even talking about marketing. The more you market, you need to market to more people now, which means exactly. you need more BD people, more marketing funds. More money and more effort yes. to just correct. go for a different industry. And yes. you need to know how they talk. The different. Exactly. If you are doing well in one, you are probably making a lot of money. Yep, You're yep, probably yep. making a lot of money if the thing that you choose is something that's very big. Maybe like, mm. for example, gym or boutique gyms. So mm. not those franchise gyms where, so you just go for those like, uh, I would say not very common gyms where they only have a few trainers. Local or, gyms. Local so, gyms, yeah. exactly. Yeah, local gyms, management system for local gyms. I think it will work out because there's yeah. a lot of local gyms in Malaysia and Singapore. So it's, uh, it, and- I think the first challenge you need to give yourself is how can you make one customer? That's it. Just get one customer, make him very happy, get paid from this person consistently. Then now think about how can you white label and then just- solve it for everyone else because I'm sure everyone else has the same pain point. Exactly, yes. Like, I want to share you a story of like exactly what happened there. In Singapore, rock climbing, it's a very popular thing and it's also a booming business. Mm. So if you were to use their app, their, most of their app looks the same from one gym to another. Now like, why these gyms are not creating their own by just using mm. SaaS? That's like, oh, it actually makes sense. If one gym is able to have their own custom management inside it, scheduling right. inside it, and then little e-commerce of buying passes. Then other gyms sees the success story of that and they will, why not we just choose that app? I want to add on a point to sure. this. Well, this yeah. is amazing because just speaking, you see, uh, right now, let's forget everything else. We're going deep into just gyms, right? And yes. talking about gyms, uh, you have normal conventional gyms. Yep. You have martial arts gyms. Yes. You have your rock climbing gyms. You have yep. CrossFit gyms, right? I, yes. I, I, do, I do CrossFit and I do martial arts and they both have different software for that. Yep. A specific app for CrossFitting and a specific right. app for martial arts, martial yes. arts, BJJ, boxing and all yeah, that. CrossFit, yes. you have your, your workout of the day. That's what they call it. Right? And you, ah. you can record your best workouts and all that. I'm sure for your one, you have your own specific rock climbing stuff as well, right? There's really so, nothing much in the rock climbing, but sure. <laughs> it's yeah, just and, booking, and, right? It's just booking, yeah. And like last weekend, I just went for a BJJ competition, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition. And they have a freaking white label. They're using a third-party tool to host their competition. I, when I click yeah. into it, I can see all the other very yeah. specific BJJ competitions within ah, Malaysia, Singapore, and all that. Right, so, so like right. these guys, the founders here, they are really embodying the micro SaaS mindset. They literally found a small pain point. The martial art industry is big, but it's not as big as the sports industry. It's a subset of the sports industry. Yes. They could have done a sports app, but no, yeah. they focus on martial arts because yeah. that's where they could win. If they did a sports app, they'd be competing with whatever the sports app 
the and wings, it's bigger, it's harder. Yeah. So yes, I would say that niching down and you could see that from our personal experiences, that actually wins, right? You just start small and then win small. And then sure. if you want to grow bigger, you probably have enough money. Just, to just a disclaimer, by the way, what we're yeah. talking about is if you go on the more the profitable bootstrap path, yes. uh, if you're looking for the, the VC or go path, yeah. then yeah. it's a completely different conversation. Exactly. And this wouldn't yeah. apply because in that route, you want to be number one and you're going to be burning money and doing business in a very different way. So exactly. yeah. Yeah. Is this conversation doesn't apply to exactly that. yes so the fifth idea i would say is just to create like in a sort of like management system app right very specific niche it can be a rock climbing gym it can be a bjj i don't know but it's just that i don't know is it a gym or is it like a place for you to train whatever or even like swimming pools <laughs> oh shit that's a good idea yeah, yeah, yeah swimming pools so i don't know if there's private swimming pools because singapore there's a lot of government kind of swimming pools but maybe in Malaysia, there's more private swimming pools. So I don't know. But you could see, I would say, and you might be thinking, which industry should you choose? Derek, how would you then answer that question? There's so many. How do I choose one? I would say choose an industry that you have experience in. That, that would be what I would say. Right? Some people would say, choose the industry that is that can make the most money and all that. The thing is, for this micro SaaS apps to work, is you need to fundamentally go deep. Because if you don't go deep, you're not solving the specific problem is yeah. still very broad. So for you to then go deep, what's the next thing? You're going to need to have some form of interest in it. Because if I'm not interested in martial arts, if I'm not interested in BJJ, I'm not going to go into the specific details of how a competition works and what is their different belt matching system, what is their yeah. point yeah. system, right? Yeah. That, there's yeah. a lot of specific things that I need yes. to know. And I'd yes. say start with what you're familiar with. And by the way, if you're familiar with, it means that friends, you yeah. know, you, you immediately already have the first pool of audience that would pay for it right what about you i totally agree i'm uh, just focus basically go to your hobby there's a uh, two sides of the coin if you like your hobby and you want to make a business out of it you might like it more if you oh, like yeah. your hobby but if you made a business of it you're probably gonna hate it more <laughs> so, so, so but it really depends and if you're really passionate of changing because even in a specific hobby industry there are certain things that could be improved not everything like their app is amazing what right. the app that i'm using it's not perfect it's just no, no, a source and, of and you know what's the best yeah. there may be apps that are from australia or from singapore yes, right? and yeah. i'm in malaysia and you can then further niche down even further for BJJ competitions in malaysia which exactly. is like even though it's a small feature, but I'm sure there are specific local things that only Malaysians care about. And like the market's yep. so big, Grab and Uber, they can both exist at the same time. Bro. Exactly. There's always certain features or problems that you solve better than the other app. So it's always something that you can always talk to the people that you want to build the app for. So let's summarize the five app ideas or with AI that we have talked about. The first one is the meeting AI summarizer for businesses. Second is the math questions generator using AI for tuition center owners. Third is a marketplace for AI prompts. Fourth is the legal templates <clears throat> contracts with an AI personal lawyer to vet through to see if there is non-standard wordings or paragraphs. And lastly, which I think will be an amazing start for a lot of you, is just a management software to a very specific niche of freelancers where you can aim gym owners and even gym itself you have rock climbing gyms you have bjj gyms you have speed yeah. gyms as well most of the time your hobbies are the best place because you already know people there and this is where you can also talk to people who owns the business of where you are doing your hobby as well all right so with that said thank you so much for listening i hope you like it if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want more of this kind of videos subscribe down below and comment down what is an amazing app idea that you have that might make you a few couple of bucks per month. Thank you so much and see you in the next one. Thank bye you, bye. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Jay. -bye. Bye. Okay.